Hello. My name is Julie. What's yours? Hello. Italian mother, I'm a good Italian wife. I make the good Italian pasta every Sunday of my life. And when I get the problems, cause they sure enough do come, I put a pot of water on my hair up in a bun, cause I'm a good Italian mother. I'm a good Italian wife. I make the good Italian pasta every Sunday of my life. Hey, my husband is Sicilian, so I gotta treat him right. He makes the sweet cannolis and I eat them with delight. But if he goes out drinking, he won't sleep in my bed. Cause I take out my rolling pin and tap him on the head. Cause I'm a good Sicilian mother. I'm a good Sicilian wife. I make the good Italian pasta every Sunday of my life. Hey, how you doing? You like Italian sausage? I thought you might, Fred. I got some in my purse. Would you like to try some? Yeah, you can eat it with your mouth. Oh, it's delicious. Papa's recipe. I'll give it to you someday. Gorgonzola, mozzarella, malparele, parmesana, getrio. Oh, a new song. Hey, we're getting professional. <laughs> that was enough of that one anyway, wasn't it? Yeah. Hey, I want to celebrate Festa Italiana is coming up at the end of September. And I'll be singing there. And you can hear me sing all these songs again. <laughs> no, and I've got some surprises. I always have surprises. I was at a dance with this Italian guy in his leather pants. They were so tight and he was sad and shy. We began to dance. We took it to the max. But I'm a sad, sad girl because his face contains an axe. Blame it on the Cosa Nostra. Ice pick in his spine. Blame it on the Cosa Nostra. He was the merry and kind. Well, it started at Kashopo's butcher's shop. And then I asked him, how do you cook a stuffed pork chop? Blame it on the Cosa Nostra. The mob's gone wild, just like here in Seattle. Yeah. Be careful. Be safe can't be safe enough. Lock your doors. Carry a gun. Try not to use it. Blame it on the Cosa Nostra. Mafia is well organized in every sector of society. Blame it on the Cosa Nostra. Well, it started with numbers. It's a track. And now I have to take my engagement ring back. Blame it on the Cosa Nostra. Seattle's gone crazy. It's free falling. What's next? That was unplanned. Thank you. Just like all my babies. Hello, Jerry Lewis. Joyce was expecting Marlon Brando to walk through the door. Well, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm still practicing, uh, social distancing. I, I just allowed one of my very dearest friends to uh, be here tonight. Um, her name is Eulalie Eisenhower, and yes, she is a distant great-great-granddaughter of our former President Eisenhower. Uh, unfortunately, she, um, well, I mean, uh, she's not feeling well. You can kind of see her in the corner. I, I don't know. I let her wear one of my wigs and I think it went to her head and she kind of started drinking. She just graduated from the School of Mixology. She has a bartender's license and she told me to give a shout out. She's looking for a job, a starter job, you know, one that doesn't take too much, you know, organization because her memory is just, well, you can't, don't, you can't even have a conversation with her. Yeah. Anyway, um, Eulalie, yeah, Eulalie Eisenhower. Are you okay back there? Oh, I see. She said, I lost my glove. Okay, well, she did have a, <clears throat> a little accident with her hand when she was a ch child. I guess her mother uh, cut, her, cut her hand accidentally, and uh, well, the rest is history. 
And uh, so she's, I, I, you know, I, feel, I help the underdog. I like people of all religions and races. And yes, she is white, as white as it gets. But, you know, she is um, just someone who's so special that I just had to let her come in and watch the show. She's thinking of maybe if bartending doesn't work out, going into show business. And I said, well, they go hand in hand. And so many, I've seen so many bartenders in my life marry the cocktail waitress. Have you guys ever seen that? Hey, <laughs> Fred, what have you been doing? I see Fred over there in Port Angeles, Tacoma, something like that. And Jerry Lewis from Las Vegas, how are you doing? How is that walkathon going? Anyway, life is crazy here in Seattle and I didn't mean to make fun of the fact that it's challenging on every level. So um, last time I was here, and I wanna say a shout out to Joyce Glasgow. She, she's just uh, always telling me, Julie, do a little longer show. But you know, Joyce, I've understood that people prefer very short shows. They like short shows because they wanna move on to something else and get stimulated again. And, um, and normally I do, I am a little, you know, long-winded, I'll admit it. I'll be the first to admit it. I love to talk, but not as much as some people. In fact, um, two talky, chatty people sometimes have uh, difficulties together. But uh, that all aside, I love everybody and everybody loves me. Green light, let's go forward in life, okay? And uh, create some, uh, happiness wherever you are and you know send them some 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 something in new orleans you know ah uh, you know when i think about them i just think wow you poor blessed people i've never been to your city and i feel like going there and helping them if anybody else wants to go with me let me know yeah well you know there are people all over the world suffering and so it's like we have to have a revolution or a, a great big specialized insane asylum to put a lot of people in and, and having it be run efficiently, please. Well, anyway, I don't wanna get into politics. Somebody said, oh, Julie, you should run for mayor. You know, and I said, you know something? That is so crazy, it just might work. <laughs> And you know what I would do? I would open up a great big mental institution and have all my friends working there. And some of them are professional therapists and psychiatrists, and one's an even a brain surgeon. So, you know, and just say, hey, we're gonna turn this world back white side up. And, and well, not this world, how about this city? And from here we can branch out. Well, at least I go on and on. I wanna say welcome back to Peter Danello. He just came back from the Amazon jungle where he went to meet some activists who, um, and, and also to go on a little trip. And he's back in town, so you know things are happening. And he lives downtown, so he doesn't realize what happened while he was gone. Don't anybody tell him. And I have, I'd like to, I'm really in an Italian mood because the Festa Italiana is coming up September 26th and 25th. And I will be singing on Sunday, the 26th at 12 noon. 12 noon? Really, Dennis? That, is that, okay, yeah. Dennis says 12 noon, that's a good time for me. Well, I guess that's better than 11, right? Hey, I wanna do a shout out to Carl over there in LA. And how's Tom Brisk sitting in his easy, easy chair watching TV and listening to me? What, he's got the television on, but he's listening to me. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so I love you all, you know. Oh, I forgive you and you can forgive me. Cause you know, sometimes I disappoint people and, and sometimes people disappoint me. And I thought, you know, nobody's perfect, and most people are far from it. The most perfect, oh, the most, po <laughs> the most perfect person I know is me. And uh, I love myself. And I hope you love yourself too. 
because love is where it all starts. You can't love anybody else until you love yourself. Don't ask me how you do it. But there, what I do is I use affirmations. Affirmations, people. Oh, what's crazy lately? Um, let's see. For example, someone was robbed at Green Lake, and she was 58 years old, and she got shot in the stomach. And that, that, that's crazy. That, that is crazy. Why would anybody shoot someone they were robbing? Wasn't she giving them her money? So last week, anyway, I was reading about my Sicilian adventure, and I did want to announce that I have uh, completed my first draft. <laughs> Gee, Joyce is giving me all these great ideas while the show is in progress. I'm not doing any occult tonight because I'm saving up all my energies for a seance I'm having on Sunday night. So, sorry. Yeah, but I'll, I'll remember to think of you, Joyce. So, uh, my story was about um, my trip to Sicily. I wanted to get back in touch with my roots. Have you ever done this, planned a trip, and you go, I just want, this is going to be, I want this trip to change my life. And then you take that trip, and your life, of course, changes a little, as it always does when you travel, but it didn't change it the way I really wanted it. So, you know, I wanted to get a double passport. If anybody hears me up there in the, in the upper regions and they can grant wishes, I want a double passport. I want, I want to go somewhere real fast. So anyway, this book that I haven't written completely yet, I have my excerpt from Sicily. And I went to Sicily, met a man, of course. He was a friend of a friend. They said, oh, he'll pick you up and blah, blah, blah. And he was very helpful. And my friends, Sylvia and Lucho, you know, they were on a cruise in Turkey conveniently when I was there. And um, so I didn't know where I was going to stay because I wanted to go to the beach. But the guy says, no, the beach, you don't go to the beach in October. Are you stupid? And I said, oh, <clears throat> Okay, well, take me where you want. Um, and he goes, well, how about well, Catania? I go, yeah, this is Catania, right? He goes, yeah, you, I, we'll get you a hotel. He goes, how much do you want to spend? I thought, this is the first time I've ever had a man ask me. No, just kidding. I said, well, $40. Anyway, he goes, that's too cheap. I've got a place for you. You can stay there for a couple days. This is like, you know how Italians are? Sicilians are even more like impatient. Like, I can't stand a problem. Just come to my place. So anyway, he had his own place too. I don't want you to think this was any monkey business. He came over in the morning before going to his job. Oh no, I already read that. He gave me some, oh, so I stayed overnight there. He brought some groceries and coffee. And I thought, oh, what a what an adorable man any guy who brings me coffee in the morning when i'm traveling it's like honey are you busy what are you doing the rest of your life so anyway gaetano he gave me some directions on how to get around in catania and some interesting sights to see like il duomo a spectacular cathedral that was built just like a dome and the composer Bellini's home, a frequented musician by tourists. But it was funny, there were hardly any tourists in Catania in October. It was like, I was the odd one there. He dropped me off in the middle of town and told me how to take the bus back to my temporary abode when I was finished looking around. Just wandering about in such an exotic place, totally alone, was interesting, frightening, and electrifying. Ooh, a mosquito. I'd ask people, scuse, senor, a dove il duomo? The old man looked at me like I was joking and said something I did not understand at all, like, bah, fangul, gesture, gestured down the street, and I realized it was extremely there. It was right like in front of me. 
um, I think he thought I was playing a joke on him. Um, and you know, C Sicilians, Italians, they're very sensitive people and they hate it when people make fun of them and make jokes like, hey, uh, standing in front of the Space Needle, um, hey, uh, sir, Seattleite, uh, can you tell me where the Space Needle is? It's like, it's not even funny. I made it home on the bus after having lunch at, well, before I, at a trattoria, and I realized upon having to choose um, items from the menu that I was finally home. Finally a menu where everything on it I wanted. Hey, that's a great rhyme. Everything resonated with my taste buds, delicious and appealing. This is my place. This needs some rewriting. But anyway, I mean, I finally thought, wow, no wonder I feel so out of place in other places. I have this whimsy about marrying a wealthy foreigner, getting a dual passport, skipping town, and living far away from my convoluted family and become extraordinarily content and happy with a cute Sicilian honey pie to divert me from ever worrying about my future or anything again. I'd never look back at those complicated brothers, those thunderous dreary nightclubs, <laughs> and restaurants where I used to constantly hustle to work in and have to sing while everyone talked and laughed, which made me feel both enervated and excluded. That's not good, Julie. As I continued to give and give, hoping at some point it would click and I'd get ahead. Yes, this was at a low point in my life, by the way. And not like now, I'm on top of the world. Um, but back then, you know, I, I did not like the slowness of my life. I wanted some action. I didn't realize how much I hated performing in these situations. What situations? Oh, where people talk and laugh and, and, and go, and, and who are you? Uh, what? You, you, you're really good. I didn't realize how much I actually hated performing in these situations, but it's all part of paying dues. Eventually, I became unconsciously competent handling any performance situation. I looked like I liked it, but behind my mask, I was using my singing engagements to lead me to something better. Something like this with a handsome potential Sicilian lover, soon to be my impresario and husband. All that work practicing and sacrificing would finally be worth it. I would settle down someday anywhere, like this beautiful island of Sicily, with a very lucky man, if I do say so myself. Though I stayed at the same level in Seattle, I flourished when abroad. Though I stayed at the same level in Seattle. That's why we need to travel. We need to get to the next level of something, right? None of us are evolving enough. I have noticed that it's starting to hit people that is like, whoa, I'm like, you know, you got to adapt. You got to adapt. You have to reinvent and improvise. Adapt, adapt, reinvent and improvise. Adapt, adapt, reinvent and improvise. It was our third date and a Sunday. Today is beautiful. We go for a picnic at my farm. Farm? Ooh, I like farms. We picked up picnic supplies at a small shop as he said hello to people he knew. They gazed at me as though he and I were a couple. He engaging in small talk, complimenting her children. I was becoming part of his life. Then we chose fun picnic Stuff like Italian sausage. That's back when I was, I was a meat eater. <sighs> and a special cheese, fresh anchovies, and homemade cannoli with bitter chocolate bits and a sweet ricotta cheese filling. I was in such a whirlwind of fabulousness. I mean, just for a moment, can you guys imagine, you know, driving around in his Alfa Romero and around these cliffs and 
and where was he taking me? And he was so sweet to take me somewhere. I mean, <laughs> I didn't even know him. Okay. With the sunroof opened on his alpha, love was in the air. And everywhere I felt like I was starring in a Fellini film. We stopped for a coffee at a typical charming casual cafe on a cliff overlooking the sea. People lounging about, perfectly content, doing nothing, nothing after coffee on a Sunday. Like this is what we do. This is what we do, honey. Not like in Seattle, where you have to stand in line, the coffee isn't even that hot, and you're not even in love, and then run away with your coffee in a paper cup to your next important appointment. Sicily was fantastically not that way, and slow. I think I like slow. I was so there, I was so married to it and to Gaetano. He knew how to live. Some people knew him and smiled that big knowing look. Mmm, he found someone. Mmm, American this time. He introduced me proudly, even though I hardly knew him. I was falling wildly in love. As only a person on the verge of a nervous breakdown can do. I didn't need to say that. But I did. He took me to his farm that looked like something out of a painting. Acres of land well tended. Who was this man? His orchards were heaving with oranges, lemons, and olives. Then he led me to his garden where he had vineyards of grapes, tomatoes, peppers of all colors, and oh, those oranges. Too sweet for words. He plucked one off the tree, broke it open, and gobbled a big juicy bite. Then he pulled me toward him and kissed me. Ah, oh, it was our first kiss, ooh, and it tasted like orange blossom. He was a never-ending supply of surprises. He also made wine at the farm. He took me on a tour of his cantina, offering me a taste. He showed me the wooden vats where he held actual grape stompings after harvest. My mind was swirling with versions, I mean visions, of me in a big skirt, jumping up and down, smashing the juice out, delighting in a purple pool of Dionysian delirium. More kissing took place, but he was purposefully in preparing the fire in the brick barbecue pit that was unnaturally large, reminding me of my father's less elaborate yet similar creation. We began to prepare the food together. I'll wash the tomatoes, I said shyly, for our salad as he lit up the barbie. Won't you taste my wine? It's not very good but you can try it. He poured a glass and tasted it first, grimaced a little. I thought it was great. Mmm, più per favore. That means more, please. I appreciated the social lubrication. I think that's a great place to stop. I always date my things. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry I was a little late tonight, if you, anybody noticed, because I was, what was I doing? God only knows. I, I, well, I thought it was next week, the first Friday. You know, I thought this was one of those weird months, September. And by the way, there's a new moon. So you guys, get prepared and start doing some new stuff. I want to sing a song. Um, it's kind of an autumn -y song. It's called Estate, and it's on my album, Something Cool. <laughs> oh. And it's all about saying goodbye to summer. I guess that's what we're kind of doing.
How are y'all doing? Oh, good to see you. Donatella, this is for you. like the seasons, once they go, they're gone. So let those you love know you love now.
Thank you. What a beautiful choice of song, wasn't it? Thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to say hello to Gilda Falafel, Phil Cuco. Anyway, she was the one who told me today, she goes, oh, that's such a great song for the beginning of, you know, autumn and it's still summer. Hey, happy Memorial Day, if that's what's coming up for everybody. And uh, you know how they always say, be safe? Remember in the old days, they never said, oh, you know, what did they used to say anyway? I forget, but they never said, be safe. But, you know, just have a good time. And, and I hope you're staying home. Because, you know, I don't know why people always, I mean, do you ever question, why is it that people always have to go someplace different? Do you ever ask yourself that? Hi there, Karen. Oh my God. Hey, by, by, by the way, Ruelle LeBog is playing with me on, on the Festa Italiana. It was kind of hard to find someone as talented as him available. So I prayed and I asked the good Lord. I said, send me the right pianist since my dear pianist, Ben Fleck, is no longer here, and he was my regular, rest in peace, dear Ben. I'm gonna do a little song that I heard. I hope this one, works. Two, one, two, three, four. And then we'll say goodbye. You need a great big woman to show you how to love, oh yeah. You need a big butt woman. You need a well-rounded woman to show you how to love. You need a great big woman to show you how to love. I'm a great big woman. You need a great big woman, a soft, curvy woman, a well-rounded woman, a strong, healthy woman. Yeah, come on, everybody. You need a great big woman to show you how to love, show you how to love. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> Michael and David in Texas. Happy Alamo. You need a great big woman with me on her bones you need a soft-spoken woman never leave you alone no flatbed woman gonna fall asleep at night you need a great big woman gonna love you right you need a great big woman to show you how to love i want to teach you the ten commandments of love number one always be on time number two and pick up the tab. Number three, get me gifts. All kinds of cards and goodies. Number four, don't commit adultery. Number five, have a decent, exceptional car. Yeah, number six, you gotta love me in the morning. A little loving in the morning. You gotta kiss me at lunchtime, I'll make you your lunch. You know, I'll put it in a brown paper bag and put a little love note in there. Oh, you need a great big woman <laughs> to show you how to love. Don't mention another lady when I'm in your arms. Don't say nothing nasty about my charms. Yeah, honey. In fact, I'm getting a little sick of you right now. Yeah. You got, I'm the boss. Yeah. Great big woman to show you how to love. Goodbye, Seattle. Thanks for tuning in. Tell your friends and share it. Subscribe to my channel. Yeah.